Texas judge favors religious businesses over LGBTQ rights in Fort Worth, Texas. On October 31st, U.S. District Judge Reed O'Connor of Texas ruled that religiously affiliated businesses are exempt from LGBTQ discrimination liability. Two Texas-based organizations, Braidwood Management and Bear Creek Bible Church, have previously sued the U.S. Equal Opportunity Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, or EEOC. Uh, Stephen Hotze, Stephen Hotz, a conservative physician, operates Braidwood Management, and according to court filings, he forbids employees from engaging in, quote, homosexual behavior or gender nonconforming conduct of any sort. The Bear Creek Church also holds its employees to... Um, mandates that its employees live according to biblical standards of gender and sexuality. Justice O'Connor ruled that the two businesses are exempt from the LGBTQ bias protections um, under uh, bias protections act under the first amendment and the religious freedom restoration act. O'Connor also ruled that religious nonprofits such as Bear Creek Bible Church can deny employment or fire an LGBTQ employee under the religious exemptions in Title IX of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. It is possible that this decision will be appealed and may end up before the Supreme Court, which is its own issue. Because if this is appealed and goes up to the Supreme Court, we are dealing with a very right-leaning, right um, religiously freedom over weaponizing uh, uh, panel of ju justices. So, yeah. This is what you get for voting for Trump. This is what you get. You guys felt like the, the, this is this is the curse that you have inflicted upon yourself, United States. The harm that you have inflicted upon yourself will be experienced for decades to come. You think Trump has gone? His judges are still there. And this is why these people want to escalate all of these things to the Supreme Court, because they have a conservative court, even though the United States is becoming more and more liberal. The court has now become extremely conservatives and 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 this is going to stay like this for how long these people are going to be there for life and they'd be young they'd be younger than they ever been before so unfortunately they're not going to die very soon maybe this would be one of the news that we would no never mind actually um i shouldn't uh but yeah no um great job great job even though your country is becoming more liberal you will have to deal with this. You will have to deal with this. Who are those people who said like Clinton and Trump are going to be just as bad? Where are those people? You mean Biden? Where are they? Look oh, no, you mean Hillary Clinton. Sorry, I thought you meant Hillary Bill. Clinton. No, no, Hillary Clinton. Where are those people that said there's no makes no difference? Look what you did. Look what you have done. Oh, you done. mean like those those fake lefties like Jimmy Dore? <laughs> yeah. yeah they were like, yeah. there's no difference. There's no difference. They're all the same. Are do that? Do they look like? Does it look like they were the if same? If this isn't the consequences of my own actions, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Right, secular rights is saying absolutely, Armin. The Supreme Court is totally not in line with average opinion these days in the U.S. Yeah, and these. This is how these conservatives now are gonna. You know, I think like they do. Do you agree, Sus? I think they're escalate. They're on purpose doing things that will people will appeal to take it to the Supreme Court right now. Yeah, they say so. Yeah, they say so because they're That's like, exactly this is the best. That's exactly what they did with the uh, SB8 abortion bill in Texas. They, yeah. they they say that that's what it's for. It is to, well, that one is to take so down when you, Roe v. Wade. When you, when, you, when you challenge them, when you're like, this is unconstitutional, we're going to appeal this. They're like, yes, yes, we want you to appeal this. We want you to appeal this because we want the we want to get the judges as as to to come out and come up with their rulings as as many things as possible. Like that's what they want. And again, this is nightmare. This is why I think we should stack the we should increase the number of judges on the court, like so that we could stack them up. Um, I think Biden had that plan. I don't know if it's gonna. Oh, I touched a nerve. General Zukov is saying Jimmy Dore is not a fake lefty. You are. Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Does that <laughs> burn? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I want to give a little bit more background to this case. 
So um, back in 2020, there was a landmark ruling in a case called Bostock versus Clayton County, Georgia, which upheld or it established that LGBTQ people are protected from discrimination under Title IX of the Civil Rights Act. Title IX of the Civil Rights Act refers to sex discrimination. And it's actually a very good legal argument because you're saying you're only you're only against or you only discriminate against my homosexual behavior um, because I am the same sex. If I was the opposite sex, you'd be totally fine with this behavior. Therefore, it is sex discrimination. Um, so that's how uh, m making sure that there are um, uh, laws that prevent LGBT discrimination it was folded into the Civil Rights Act now in 2020. So then these two organizations in Texas sued the EEOC, the Equal um, em, em, Equal Employment Opportunity Committee. Anyways, um, they sued the EEOC over this basically with the same old religious freedom arguments or that we're very familiar with saying this is infringing on my rights. Uh, having not being able to fire gay people is against my rights and not being able to discriminate is against my rights. <laughs> and the problem with this ruling back in 2020 was that um, the court established that LGBT protections do fall under Title IX, except that court case in 2020 didn't establish how that intersects with religious liberty. Um, and didn't delineate how to parse the two. And that's where these two lawsuits come into account. So one of the organizations that sued the EEOC over this is Braidwood Management, their for-profit. And then another one is the, um, the church, which is a nonprofit. And um, so there were kind of two separate rulings. So the first ruling had to do with the for-profit company, um, which was Braidwood Management, where this just sounds like such a lovely guy to work with, uh, this Mr. Holtz. Uh, Braidwood Management Inc. does not employ individuals who, quote, are engaged in homosexual behavior or gender non-conforming conduct of any sort and does not recognize same-sex marriage or extend employee benefits to same-sex partners and enforces a specific sex-specific dress code and grooming code, according to court documents. Um, and then separately, the judge ruled that nonprofit, religious nonprofits like Bear Creek Bible Church um, can fire and refuse to hire LGBTQ employees under Title IX's religious exemptions. I'm no lawyer, but I think that might have, there's the potential for that to have more standing because I know that the way that um, our religious exemption laws work right now is there are some cases where when you work for a religious organization, if your job is secular, so-called, like say you work for a church, but you're not involved with ministry, you just teach music, there are certain court cases that have ruled that you still are protected. You like, you still get LGBTQ protections. Um, and then there are other court cases that say, if your job is actually involved in the ministering of the religion, then that organization is exempt from the, those, um, the liability of, um, the discrimination laws. So, um, I'm no lawyer, but with that nonprofit, I can see there being potentially more standing for that, depending on the specifics. Um, and, uh, yeah, this new ruling allows both of these organizations, both for-profit and nonprofit to continue their employment practices of discrimination, um, like just completely unhindered, um, for fear of any sort of liability, responsibility, and accountability for their discrimination. Um, we need to get more liberals to move to Texas. Turn these states blue, right? Turn these states blue. Go, go, go. Dominate these places. Replace these politicians. You know, they want to they wanna change the seats on the court. 
we will go and you guys should go and just like live in these places and change the governor and the Senate and the Congresswoman, all of them, change all of them. I don't know how your Ooh. politics work. Yeah. Mustafa is asking a very good question. Mustafa is asking, do you think those whites only churches could abuse the results of these rulings? Now, so Mustafa is referring to, um, we've previously talked about a church in Minnesota that is some sort of um, Nor Norwegian, not Norwegian specifically, like uh, <laughs> it's, it's like a Norse, Norse paganism. Uh, broadly, that is a whites only church, and they are explicitly a whites only church. And um, it became very contentious in the community. Now, I'm, like I said, I'm no lawyer, but I've previously talked to Andrew Seidel. And he said that these religious freedom arguments against LGBT um, discrimination protections, there is really no distinguishing between the between that and race-based discrimination because the way that the civil rights act is constructed is that it is it is about immutable characteristics it's about discriminating against people on the basis of immutable characteristics that means something that you're born with that you can't change meaning your race your sex etc so personally i actually don't think that sexuality and gender are necessarily necessarily immutable characteristics but given the basis of how law works in this country i fully understand why civil rights movements pushed for us to be included within that categorization tell people you're lgbt so that you don't get canceled over saying that i'm very <laughs> bisexual uh <laughs> very, be very pretty i'm aggressively bisexual actually i'm aggressively bisexual that's how i describe <laughs> myself <laughs> aggressively um, hide your hide your woman everyone jesus <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> um, and so my, when i talked to andrew seidel he was basically like because the, this is constructed around this idea of a mutable characteristic if you are using religious freedoms or religious liberties as an argument to um, help take down the protections around one discriminating against one per immutable characteristics. Um, there's not really any differentiation between the other ones. So if you take down the rules that say you're not allowed to discriminate against LGBT people because of your religion, there's no difference between that and saying, I can use my religion to discriminate people of a, against people of a certain race. That's my understanding thus far, which is obviously very concerning and can go in a really ugly direction. Now, my hope is that already it's going in an ugly direction and we see a lot of public backlash. But it, if it gets to that point of like these racial exemptions, like it's or not racial exemptions, like using religious exemptions for discriminating against people on the basis of their race um i personally think america as a as a collective conscious will lose its mind <laughs> our racial conversations in this country have been rough over the past two years and i don't think we could tolerate that so i'm hoping that we can get a handle on this sooner <laughs> there's one quote that i want to read to summarize this before we move to the next story um, so Gregory Nevins, the senior counsel for Lambda Legal, um, great organization. They are a civil rights organization that um, handles litigations for really to LGBT issues. Very fantastic LGBT lawyers. Um, so he's hopeful that the a successful appeal can be made. And he said that the ruling of this judge is, quote, so bad and contains so many errors that even the Fifth Circuit will reverse at least at least parts of it. So there is some hope. We shall see how this will progress. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find 
anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our Blasphemy that we continue to send you more Blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.